This is my Voron 2.4, and like I've said in the videos in the past, I absolutely love this thing. Uh, the fact that it can print so fast just makes a lot of projects possible that would take weeks otherwise, and now you can print them within one or two days. But there is a problem with printing this quickly. It also means that your prints are gonna finish faster. So for all these prints that I've done, at most they've taken like two hours to complete, which means if you have a lot of parts to print, you are gonna be pampering the printer every two hours. You have to, you know, to give it a bit of attention. You have to clear off the bed, you have to slice the next print and start it again. So that's something that does slow you down over time. And the obvious solution is to have some sort of automated print system in this machine. But the solutions that are there right now aren't really up to what I would, would say is fully usable, like without any obvious downsides. Sure, there's the Creality CR30, which is a great system for its application, but for normal prints, it is not that fast. And you also need to print brims and do other tricks to actually get the parts to stick down to the belt. And even then, for me, they often came out banana shaped, which isn't exactly what you want for parts that should be flat. Then there are other systems that use a, a angled printer with a special bed surface where supposedly your prints just slide off. But, you know, does that really work for prints that are, you know, less than five centimeters tall and, and might adhere to the bed better than, than larger ones that can just slide off? I don't know. So the obvious solution for me is to have some sort of a bed swap system, something that's automated and something that uses a real flex bed, which is why I've ordered five more of these energetic PI coated beds. Um, they're the same material as the stock, but they are a bit smaller because I wanted to give myself a bit of room to work around. And we're gonna try to build a automated magazine fed uh, bed swap system that runs Within the printer, it runs automated, and theoretically, you should be able to just, you know, start one print, and the printer's gonna eject the bed out the side, pull in a new one, and start the print again. So let's see how well that goes. I've already got most of the parts printed up. This wasn't even like 24 hours of printing, which is fantastic. So yeah, let's get to assembling all of these. I've printed all these parts in the dust filament uh, B plus PTG, which is a line of imperfect filaments that are a result of uh, color swaps in their extrusion line, for example, but they are pretty much perfect for printing prototypes like this. And as a bonus, you sometimes get this super tasty looking color change effect in your prints. These all used to be 3D printers, so I guess it's only fair to turn them back into 3D printer parts, right? And while I'm building the frame, let's check out today's sponsor, Boxumo. Boxumo make 3D printer enclosures that keep the heat, fumes and smells inside the enclosures and drafts pets and little hands out. I've long had one of my pushers in a makeshift wooden box for printing polycarbonate and ABS, which are materials that really need that extra temperature. But this is a lot nicer. The box more enclosures come in three sizes to fit your printer and you can configure them as plain boxes or fully decked out with lights, ventilation and temperature regulation. Check them out at boxmoreenclosures.com or at the link below.
So here is that heated bed or that heated bed base temporarily mounted to what is essentially a lifting mechanism for this. And you know, what this does is basically, you know, this is already hooked up to the VOR and it's already being controlled by the do it as an additional axis. Um, essentially, this just moves down the heated bed very slowly, but with a lot of force. If I stick my finger in here, my finger is gone. I tried standing on this before and the coupler between the motor and the lead screw just popped up, but otherwise this can handle a lot of weight. And specifically, it needs a lot of weight moving down, pulling down. So what this is going to do is we're going to have our bed surfaces, our spring steel beds that will need to snap to this magnetic surface. And to do that, they're going to be pushed in from this side. And let me just get these rails in place. They're going to get pushed in from this side, roughly land in this spot. And then the heated bed, the aluminum bed is actually going to move up and it's going to snap and it's going to center itself. Wait for it. There we go. And it's going to snap in place. And once it is snapped in place, this is going to be super solid. This is not going to move anymore. That's why we have this entire mechanism at the base here. So we basically have a heated bed that is fixed in place, just like the stock bed is in the Voron. So that is the platform that we can print onto. And then once the print is done, this thing will need to move down again. And because this outer frame is resting on these rails or on these release rails here, eventually it's going to pop up and then we can push the next bit in from this side. Basically, once that is down, um, basically push it out of the printer, it's going to drop out the other side and we are ready to raise the bed again and load in the next bed. So that is the idea behind that. Now, this is a mechanism that is not like particularly simple, but it is what I eventually settled on. I had a couple of other ideas first. The original idea that I had is, you know, why I built this Voron 2.4 in the first place is to have a spinning drum within its envelope that basically had six sides with a, you know, with a heated bed on each side and then it would print on the top one. It would rotate by 60 degrees, is it? Yeah. And it would have another bed on that other side. But what I realized is these beds would need to be tiny if we actually have a full drum that fits in here. And especially once we have prints on it, you know, they would need space at the bottom too, once this thing has done a, a 180 degree uh, revolution. So I threw that out. It would have been really cool. It would have looked spectacular, but it would have been absolutely impractical. The next idea was to have some sort of a belt feed that would have uh, a couple of these beds kind of uh, in each tank tread unit that were kind of coupled together. And then the printer would pull that in um, with some sort of sprocket mechanism, basically like a chain of beds, and then have some sort of a mechanism like this. Now, I could still implement that, but eventually I realized, well, having a sprocket that engages with the tank tread and kind of pulls that through, um, and having some sort of a release mechanism that will peel the mech beds uh, off of the heater platforms, it would just get super complicated and it would have too many moving parts that would need to work with each other. So right now the idea is um, with this kind of simplified, practicalized <laughs> version is this is going to fit inside the print envelope and then just outside the printer there's going to be a stack of fresh beds in their frames and basically there's going to be a belt which is what we're going to build next uh, that will pull them in one by one and then as you just saw ejected out the other side so yeah now that this works i think the hardest part is over so basically we just need to get to building uh, the feed mechanism or a magazine and then we can put this to the test so let's go do that
Okay, so that should actually be the majority of this build done. We've got the belt fed uh, bed feeder mechanism. That's working. We've got the super sturdy bed lift to attach and peel off the magnetic beds. Now all that's left to do is to add some end stops to both of these movement axes because these are essentially just extra A and B axes and firmer. And yeah, then we should be able to give this a try. That's not an end stop. This is an end stop. Right, that's how this entire thing is gonna fit in here. Now, one thing I already realized is this thing obviously need to fit through the side of the printer and it couldn't collide with any of the parts of the Z-axis. But turns out I took measurements off of the CAD model of the Voron 2.4, which was correct. But that model was for the 250 millimeter size at 2.4 and this is a 300. So I would have had a lot more room to work with, which would have made some of the des design decisions a lot easier, but hey, it is what it is. So this thing also fits in a Voron 250. Now, you can already see there is not a whole lot of Z-axis space left. Um, obviously, this thing is still gonna drop down a bit when we take out the original bed. But yeah, with this contraption, the way it is built right now, it does take up a bit of Z-axis vertical space, but this is more of a first try a proof of concept just to see if we can get that action of latching onto and separating the mag beds off of our heater platform and whether we can get that working at all. So next up I just need to set up these two additional motors as extra axes in firmer and I did plan ahead for this which is one of the main reasons why I went with RepRap firmer because it is so easy to set up additional axes you just copy paste the config for x and y and there you go there's your a and b axes and with the expander board we do have nine independent stepper drivers in this machine and we need nine so basically these are just plugged into the two spare drivers on the expansion board and they are ready to go so let's see if we can get this moving So that appears to be working just about perfectly. Um, I did run a couple cycles on this on the swap cycle and every time it grabs the bed perfectly, um, it does also remove it from the bed pretty well. Sometimes though, uh, it looks like the bed is too far forward to actually slide into place and then this side doesn't touch down fully. So I'm just gonna add a bit of a spacer up front here so this bed sits further back. Um, the frames also work really well for holding the mag beds and for allowing me to remove them again. So this is pretty much ready for use. So basically I need to hook up the bed. I need to add some aluminum tape to these rails. Um, these frames are Prusament ASA. Uh, these rails, however, are PTG and I'm kind of afraid they're gonna melt. So aluminum tape just for some extra insulation there and then we're ready to hook up the bed, put it in the printer and try out a couple prints on this. So that was just a bit of figuring out where the probing points would need to fall to make sure that the gantry tramming squaring still works because I am still probing uh, the bed after every swap just to make sure that you know if one end uh, if one corner ends up like a tenth higher or lower we are compensating for that. Um, but yeah, the swap cycle works, the homing and probing works. I've tested the heated bed, that also works perfectly, thermistor reads well. So I guess all that's left to do is to slice a couple of parts and get this thing rolling.
Make sure to get subscribed if you like what you're seeing. All right, so that is six prints done. We got a small vase, we got Floristix ring, we've got a new fan trout for my Prusa Mark III, we've got a table hook, um, a jig for doing decking, and of course, a 3D Benchy. This one actually looks pretty good, except for the stringing. Now, these prints were all done without any intervention. Well, not quite. I did have to replenish uh, the bed magazine because there is, first of all, a dead space of one bed between the magazine and the print platform, so it always needs one extra bed in between there. And also, to eject that last print, it needs one more bed to push that out. But other than that, as long as the hopper is fed, this did not need any intervention or interaction from me, and that is exactly what it was going for. Now, obviously, the question you're going to have is like, how do you how do you do that? How do you get these parts to come out continuously without you having to start a new one every time? And the simple answer to how I did this is just copy paste a bunch of G codes onto each other and just create one long file that has uh, the start and G code of everyone, and of course the print. But the proper way to do that is, of course, through Octoprint. Um, there is a plugin called Continuous Print that is made exactly for this application uh, for any printer that has a bed that can clear itself. So be it a belt printer or like a, a 3D Q system that rams the prints off of your bed um, for anything like that that plugin is perfect. But even when you don't need to fill up a bunch of print surfaces with parts and just have them continuously pop out, even then this can be pretty useful. Like for example, the way I designed this um, is I was drawing parts and while I was drawing stuff, it was already printing that the last stuff I had designed, I immediately sent off to the printer. And then of course I had to clear the beds manually um, like this. I could just export an STL, throw it in the slicer, upload it to the printer and it would be you know, once the last print is finished, it would be automatically able to pull in a fresh bed and keep on printing. Now, there are still a couple of shortcomings with this design. Uh, first of all, the most obvious one is the beds that I'm using are significantly smaller than the uh, original bed. This has a 300 by 300 millimeter print size. This has like 220 by 150. 50-ish. Now that is mostly a result of me having ordered these beds a while ago while I was still thinking I would make it a, a revolving uh, drum that sits in the printer and not a magazine system. But um, looking at the system again, I think it would be possible to actually use the full-size original beds. Like this can still fit to the side of the printer just fine, even with a frame. And with a different pusher design, a different belt pusher design, I think we could even eliminate the need to have like one extra spare bed in the queue just to push that bed onto the platform. I think that would definitely be possible. Also, of course, you do lose a lot of build height with this one. I am down to, I think, 110 millimeters of usable Z-axis space. I've already lost quite a bit by using the longer Mosquito Magnum Plus, and now this reduces that usable space further. Again, prototype, first iteration, this can definitely be built slimmer. I just built what I knew would work, but now that I know how stuff works together, I think this could be slimmed down significantly. Also, with this sort of an automatic queue system, you kind of need a filament runout sensor. Um, right now, I'm just using standard one kilogram spools, but if you just keep replacing the beds, you know, once they, they get pushed out, you pop the print off and you, you put it back into the magazine, um, like you will be running out of filament at some point and that would require manual interaction, intervention and, and keeping an eye on it. Filament sensors are super easy to add and if you want to go way overboard, you could even add the palette, you know, the mosaic palette, which is made for like multicolor printing, but in the simplest use case, you can just load a bunch of spools into it and it's gonna automatically switch over um, from one spool to the next once those run out. So that is something that could definitely solve that challenge. In my case, I am extremely happy with how this worked out, especially the fact that it just works. Like there's there's nothing that really went wrong. Yeah, there were a couple tweaks that I had to do, like uh, adjust the spacing, but that was all planned for. And overall, I think I very much achieved my goal of wanting to have a printer that would print like it has a regular static bed, um, while still having an automatic clearing, like not using any special bed surfaces that might have subpar adhesion, uh, not requiring a belt system or stuff like that, but just having something that looks to the printer and functions like a regular static bed. And I'm very happy to report that the Voron, with the goal that I built it for, the application that I built it for, 
suited perfectly for this. So if you like this video, as always, give it a like, uh, get subscribed if you wanna see more like it. And if you wanna support the channel so that I can do projects like these that may or may not turn out well at all, um, if you wanna support me and make sure I can keep doing this sort of stuff, uh, check out Patreon or the YouTube memberships. And thank you to everyone who is already supporting me uh, there. Yeah, as always, thank you for watching. Keep on making, get subscribed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.